And so number five then from the 2016 Advanced Higher Mathematics of Mechanics. Here we go, a five mark question this time, and it's on simple harmonic motion. Now, there is a formula sheet. For what reason, I don't know. Who doesn't know that? Obvious. Even that part, obvious, obvious. Only so useful thing there is this centre of mass of a semicircle. But it does give you, out of all the different things, it does give you simple harmonic motion. Now that one's obvious because simple harmonic motion's a sinusoidal motion, but you could have derived that yourself. You don't actually need this. You could have derived that quite quickly. Simply by putting down the obvious one, let's just use X. If simple harmonic motion is sinusoidal, A sine omega t, there could be a phase, but it doesn't really matter, then the velocity will be got by differentiating that, A omega, function of a function, cos omega t, squaring it, V squared would be A squared omega squared cos squared omega t, cos squared can be written as 1 minus sine squared, a squared omega squared 1 minus sine squared omega t, and there you are, v squared equals omega squared times, put the a inside, a squared, a squared times that, you're back to x minus x squared. You could have got it yourself just in a few seconds. You didn't need to be told that. But you don't need to do that because it tells you at the front. There it is. v squared equals omega squared a squared minus x squared. So when you look at this question, and it says simple harmonic motion, and it gives you values for V and for X, you know that what you're getting here is really five marks, not for knowing anything about simple harmonic motion, you're getting five marks for simultaneous equations. So what are these simultaneous equations? Well, when the tip is five millimetres, that's a bit of a pest, I'll just start it off, omega squared times A squared minus, when it's five, so squaring it will be 25, and it's millimetres, so it's over 10 to the 3, something over 10 to the 6. I think I'll just leave it like that. Putting it back into metres would equal 2 squared, which is 4. That gets you a mark. Next one. Omega squared times A squared minus. Now, X this time is 7, so squaring it 49 upon 10 to the 6 will equal 1 squared, which is 1. That gets you a mark. You've got two marks just for copying down this formula and putting those numbers into it. And so now it's just a case of here's some simultaneous equations. I'll call that one and two. Solve them. Well, there's two ways. Since I've got a product here, you can remove the omega squared by dividing them. Or if you multiply them out, the omega squared a squareds would disappear, just leaving you omega squareds. I'll do the division first. So I'll do that. I'll do two divided by one. So that means I've got... When I divide them, they'll cancel out, of course. I'll have a squared minus 49. And I know it looks a little bit clumsy, leaving that 10 to the 6 underneath. Divided by a squared minus, and this is number 125 over 10 to the 6, will equal 1 over 4. But now I'm just going to cross multiply. 4a squared minus, and now 4 times that is 196 over 10 to the 6, will equal just that, a squared minus 25 over 10 to the 6. Taking that across, so I don't want to multiply it by 10 to the 6 because to get a, I'll just have to divide again afterwards. Taking that across, 3a squared would be, bringing this across will be a plus 196. So taking the 25 away with 171. And then finally, a squared is going to be, adds up to 9, so 3 will go in nicely. 3 into that goes 57. So it's 57 upon 10 to the 3, oops, 10 to the 6. And finally, A will be the square root of that. So that's root 57 upon 10 to the 3 metres. Well, over 10 to the 3 means it's actually millimetres. But I'll need a figure for that. I presume I can't just leave it like this. So instead of root 57 times 10 to negative 3 metres, I think I'm either going to put... That would be 7.549 and so on times 10 to the negative 3 metres, but maybe we'll just write that as 7.55 millimetres. Now to find omega, I would substitute that back in. 
So I'll go for one of them, say I go for equation 2, I'll go to over here. Using equation 2, then I've got this. Omega squared times, and I know that a squared is 57, upon 10 to the 6, minus 49 upon 10 to the 6 equals 1. So omega squared would be, now they're both over 10 to the 6, so that's an 8. So it'll go the opposite way around then, it'll be 10 to the 6 over 8. So omega is going to be 10 to the 3 over root 8 radians per second. But, doesn't it actually ask what's the angular velocity there? What it says is, I've lost it, the number of oscillations in one second, it wants the frequency. Well, the frequency will be omega divided by 2 pi. If that's the number of radians per second, well, how many lots of a complete turn of 2 pi do you get per second? Divide it out. So that's going to be 10 to the 3 over 2 root 8 pi. And that'll just be hertz now. But we'll have to work, with it. work out what that comes to. And that turns out to be 56.269 and so on hertz. So the frequency is 56.3 hertz. Or should I have said oscillations per second? So it's really just simultaneous equations. The other way, would have been to have them multiplied out and do simultaneous equations by adding and subtracting. So if that was the case, I'd probably change these first of all. So the first one would be omega squared a minus 25 omega squared upon 10 to the 6 equals 4. Now I'll call it 1. The second one would be omega squared a squared, don't know if I said that at that time, minus 49 omega squared over 10 to the 6 equals 1. And then subtracting them, I think I'll do 1 take away 2 to get positives, so 1 subtract 2 would be, they would disappear. Then you'd have negative 25, but plus 49 would give you 24. Omega squared over 10 to the 6 would equal 4 take away 1 is 3. And there you go. Omega squared would be 3 over 24, which is 1 eighth, times 10 to the 6. So omega is going to be the same as before, 10 to the 3 over root 8 hertz. No, no, oh, no, radians per second. From which we'll get the frequency, just as before, omega over 2 pi, blah, blah, same as before, and that was 56.3 oscillations per second or hertz. But now if I want A, I can substitute that back in. I know this is looking shorter now, isn't it? I can substitute that back into either of them. I think I'll go for, whoops, the original one, which didn't have a name there. So I'll call it two-ish. So using number two, as in the original two, unfortunately, you've got omega squared, which is 10 to the 6 over 8, times a squared minus 49 over 10 to the 6 equals 1. So a squared minus 49 upon 10 to the 6 equals 8 upon 10 to the 6, cross multiplying. So a squared would be taking that across and adding it, 57 upon 10 to the 6. So once again, a is going to be the square root of 57 upon 10 to the 3. Root 57 and root 57 was that, I've put it away again, was that 7.549, 7.55, and then times 10 to the negative 3 metres, or millimetres. And of course, the other marks, apart from obtaining these two, would have been, they had been one for getting the value of omega, one for getting the value of A, and then another one again for actually getting the frequency, the number of oscillations per second.